What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Rococo Office Hours. I'm Sam Lazarus, Creative Director for Rococo. Um, and I'm just gonna post up this link into our Discord. We have a Rococo Discord uh, that is amazing. I encourage everyone to go check out if you're curious about mocap related stuff, or Rococo related stuff, going live for office hours. Boom. Um, so yeah, you know, this is a time when we are here and we're just kind of around to chat with if people have questions about workflow stuff or motion capture in general, go on tangents. Um, we usually record some free mocap. We take recommendations for mocap that you guys want to make. We'll make some mocap if anybody wants anything in particular. Um, and then kind of do something creative on the back half of the uh, of the hour or the hour and a half or two hours or whatever it may be. Um, today, I think it'd be fun to... So we did a big webinar yesterday. And if you were a part of that, you have um, a 10% off. You should be getting a, a code for 10% off. Uh, Rococo.com. Uh, we gave away a free full performance motion capture suit uh, and bundle, which was awesome. I often get questions about, you know, I'd love to get into it, but I, but I, I can't afford it right now. Join our webinars, join our uh, community events, and we usually give away product. Uh, so I think it was Sienna one yesterday, which was awesome. Um, but yesterday at the end of the webinar, I was, I was trying to get some metahuman stuff going. And, um, you know, I thought it'd be fun to play around with some metahuman stuff today. So I found a great, um, oh, hey, Mateo. Hey, CG Worm. Game of Thrones. Yes. I found a great Daemon Targaryen bust uh, that I threw into the old mesh to metahuman and I got like an amazing result. So I thought it'd be fun to play around with that. Um, <laughs> you know, hey, Peter. Join our webinars. We usually give stuff out. We also do stuff with like Clinton Jones and we try to, you know, there's a couple people that we work with to try and give suits out um, on their competitions. Yes, it is a spooky, spooky moves. Yes, that would be a good theme for some mocap this week. Um, nice, Melissa. Yeah, the mesh to metahumans are really fun. Yeah, we're going to get Dr. Niraj. Uh, we're going to get into... Uh, some mesh to metahuman is going to be good. Howdy, howdy, power core. Okay, so you know what? I, to get started, yeah, let's make some mocap because that's how we that's how we start things off. I forgot that it was spooky month, so maybe we'll do some like mummy stuff and some ghost stuff, I guess. What else is spooky? Throw your recommendations in the chat. Um, nice, Raj. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it a little bit here. Joop, joop. So I got my Rococo studio open. I'm gonna throw on my gloves. Ooh, Thriller, I mean, Thriller music video. Look, I hate to do it, but man, you can't beat Mixamo's Thriller music video. And I do not know Thriller well enough to be able to do that. You know, Mixamo's got a, they've got the entire dance for Thriller, which is brilliant. I see it all the time because everyone uses Mixamo. Um, but I'm not gonna try and compete with that. <laughs> Thriller, yeah. I, anything, any other spooky dancing? Oh yeah, it does have finger capture. We're gonna get up and running right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm in a Smart Suit Pro 2. Alberto, good to see you. One of our amazing mods on the Discord who knows everything about everything. Alberto Flores, AF01. Um, Gangnam style? I don't know that dance either. That's not very spooky. I did, I, I kind of, we normally do kind of a smattering of things that occur to me in the moment. Um, and I do think for, unless people have requests, which I will do, the other mocap I'm gonna make is gonna try and be on a theme or on a scene, right? Also, let me just go through this really quick. So I'm wearing a Rokoko Smart Suit Pro 2. I got my smart gloves. It's all powered by a generic battery pack. It works over Wi-Fi. This is our free software. We have tons of tutorials on the ch on the YouTube channel. And we have one calibration pose. We'll do it right here. And we'll also get some face capture up and running uh, for the MetaHumans too. 
Choop, choop. Yes, so I thought it'd be better to do like little scenes. And that way also when we're giving away the mocap, it can just kind of make a little bit more sense. So I thought we'd do like an execution today, which is spooky. But you know, so it would be the person uh, like who's getting executed, you know? And then like the executor, the, the executioner, someone in the crowd, like a medieval execution. Um, oh yeah, there's a totally streamlined way to combine face capture with uh, body capture. It's, um, here Peter, because you're asking. Let me get it up and running. We're gonna do this, well we can start with this actually, because I wanna do some stuff for the, um, for my Daemon Targaryen metahuman. Um, so I just need to be, make sure I'm on the same Wi-Fi network as, yep, I am, as my computer. And then I open up our, our app, connect it all up. Yeah, let's start with this. We'll, we'll start with this. And then people, if you have spooky things that you want to see, and usually I just kind of put the, put a tripod on my desk for this kind of thing. Boom. Yeah, but yeah, um, I kind of, I, this, so this will just be, we'll play this back for the meta human later, uh, when we get that all set up. Yeah, Peter, of course. Kana, what's going on? Yes. So spooky things. And other than that, we'll do an execution and then we'll jump into a uh, meta human land. And I, I haven't set up that meta human yet. Actually, let me. How's my, ooh, it's already it downloaded. One bummer about the metahumans, they take a long time to download, but that one's ready to go. Nice. Okay, so let's uh, just record some facial motion capture for our little Game of Thrones guy. I always do a calibration pose basically before every take, because um, I just think, why not? Um, let's do it. So do my little calibration. I'll get a little bit closer to my iPhone, because why not? I am Damon Targaryen. You know, that's that facial motion capture. I don't know, something. We just need anything. We actually have, and again, all the free mocap that we've ever recorded is uh, available, you know, uh, on the G drive. I think that'll be pretty good. And we can drive old Damon uh, live too, later. But <clears throat> I am gonna, I, we're not gonna do more facial motion capture because we have so much of it. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. That face cap. Oh, good questions, Peter. Um, so, and what are the other questions? Okay. Uh, bum bang, <laughs> what character creator programs come with the 52? Good, great question. Um, uh, character creator four now has the 52 blend shapes also, um, and they have their own app as well. Uh, Daz characters now come with the 52 blend shapes. There's always a little finagling you need to do. Metahumans, of course, are the big ones. Uh, they come with the 52 blend shapes. And other than that, um, you kind of have to scrimp and scrounge for them or make them yourself, which isn't impossible, but is difficult. And I would never do that. Um, okay, Mac one, already got a full rig of V1. Will I get an update like V2 to work with a new version of the software? I'm not sure you should. I'm not sure you should be able to use you, you will get an update to be able to use beta um, or we won't 
discontinue studio legacy. Um, so there, you will always be able to record mocap with the V1 suit uh, because um, it just won't have some of the features that the uh, that the V2 suit has in beta. But no, it should. And if you have any questions, reach out to um, I think it's support at rococo.com or hi at rococo.com about that. Peter, yeah, how much is this? So uh, suit gloves are $3,500 as a bundle. Face capture add-on is an additional $500. And then for live streaming, you need to do one of our subscription plans. Um, but there is a free 30-day trial. Uh, and there's also a free 30-day money-back guarantee on the suit. So if you don't, if it isn't for you, you can always send it back. Um, it uh, So the iClone will not rig the blend shapes by default. You just need to go in. And we have a tutorial on the channel that goes through that. Um, I would just go to the Rococo channel and um, you should be able to do that. Do the monster mash. I don't know. Is the monster mash a dance, Alberto? Werewolf Bar Mitzvah is one of my favorite um, Halloween songs. Look it up. Tracy Morgan, Tracy Jordan from 30 Rock. Werewolf Bar Mitzvah. It's a great song. Um, um, so we have bone maps that we've given out in free project files, which kind of automatically is that it's a bone map you can find for metahumans i believe although it might be out of date now but no there's no real easy way to automate it we we will continue to make bone maps that we'll give out do it peter well i i don't know if there's any uh we we had that 10 percent discount uh too that we just had for our webinar so keep keep an eye out on those um Yes, the system is inertial, so it works over Wi-Fi. You don't need cameras. You just need a dedicated router, which I have over here. Um, Pull-ups, climbing, and swinging motions. Not that good, Curtis. So our suit runs off of foot contact with the ground. It's a, a very essential part of Rococo motion capture. You can do all of those things, but um, there's just some workarounds you need to do with them. For example, like right now, I'm in locomotion mode, so I'm moving around, right? I'm moving around my environment. But if I were to turn on treadmill mode, now it doesn't care about my foot contact. I could do a pull up and it's like, because it's just keeping me in place. You're not getting the translation, but when we've had, for example, like circus acrobats use the suit, They'll use treadmill mode, and then they're just going to have to hand key the location stuff. But this, if I move around with this, you'll see I won't move. So this makes it easier to do like crawling, for example. What did you ask? Pull-ups, climbing. Yeah, and elevation tracking in beta can kind of do some of those uh, things now in terms of climbing surfaces, not in terms of like rock climbing. Rock climbing, I don't know. I've never tried it. Swimming will work well on treadmill. Yep, that's true from Alberto. Although don't take your suit, obviously, into the water. <laughs> water really messes with Wi-Fi and the suit is not waterproof, but you can do it on, on a stool. You know, you just go on a stool. You know, and you can take your feet off the ground. Let's see what happens. I'll sit down and take my feet off the ground and see what happens. <laughs> see, that's what happens when you don't have foot contact with the ground. You'll fly away. Because this the suit is basically, it's all the other movements of your mocap is generated from the suit knowing where your feet are placed. That's how you get translation throughout space. You know, but that doesn't mean that you can't like turn around or, you know, do jumps. It'll pick up all that stuff. It just doesn't like sustained feet off the ground stuff. Yes, it's flying away. That's what'll happen. Um, okay, so yeah, um, I'll do a mummy. 
We could do a mummy walk cycle. That could be nice. Uh, let's do a mummy walk cycle. Peter, is there a way to anchor your motion to the virtual floor, such as... I mean, you're always anchored to the floor in locomotion mode, but you can also use treadmill mode, and that will always lock your hips into the origin of the uh, of the space. Other than that, you kind of have to do it in post, in Unreal, or in Unity, or something like that. Um, but yeah, let's do a... Um, yeah, Curtis. Hey, there's a, you know, as I like to say, no tool is good for every situation. Ours has limits. And it's really important, actually, that you play within the limits of the tool. Our limit is that it really needs foot contact with the ground. But if you can play within the limits of that, you can get some really amazing stuff. Um, so, we try to do expectation setting as much as possible. Hello, Dev. What's going on? Okay, we'll do a mummy walk cycle. Walk cycles, which are a really great feature of Rococo Studio, they get a little funky with... Uh... Oh, I gotta get rid of my face. It's weird. Uh, they get a little funky with hands. So you might see some hand wonkiness, but it still should be usable. So this could be zombie or mummy, actually. Yeah. Okay, I'll do a calibration pose over here. And then let's hit it. And the nice thing is I'm, you know, I'm in a tiny little office. Let's run ba that back. You'll see how kind of easy it is to, uh... so first I would, I would go through, well, we're gonna go through some of the cleaning process. We have a bunch of cleaning filters um, in Rococo Studio that are just really quick to help you get the best, you know, fix a little micro drift that we had right there. Fix, fix, fix. And then, These look good. So if we want to make a walk cycle, let's say we could go from right foot up. And you can see these are the foot contact with the floor right here, right? So right foot gets lifted up off the ground. Oh, this, so actually, no, I want to, I want to fix this really quick. You can see there is that error there. If the software doesn't understand what your foot contact with the ground is, it's gonna get weird. So actually, it doesn't even matter because I want it to be right here. So then boom, so this is a little segment, right? This is one walk cycle. I can make this loopable, start from origin, close loop, bada boom, bada bing. Again, you're gonna see some funkiness with the hands that we probably have to fix. Yeah, hands are all jacked up, but this is, you know, a walk cycle that you could put into, um, you know, Houdini or whatever, and uh, like it's it's closed, so it's gonna be cyclable. Yeah, so that's really good. Okay, that's that's good. Um, what else are we gonna do front? Calibration. Um, do a stomp. Sure. Like a like a magic stomp. You want me to really lead up to it? Like a... Kind of thing? Okay, we'll stomp it. And then what do you say in origin? Might have a sneaky mocap. German soldier that slides his weapon out of the way as if it's on a weapon sling. So he's holding his weapon and then he slides it out. 
And then, wait, okay, so then he, he pulls out a torch. Pulls out a torch. Okay, cool. We'll do a stomp first. Again, calibration pose. I calibrate a lot because it doesn't hurt, and micro drift, drift starts immediately from the last time that you've calibrated. So, record. Something like that. Laird, Lard, Lard Tom. Oh, f uh, oh, oh, sorry, American. Uh, okay, flashlight, yeah, okay, I got it, that's easy. Uh, so he, they're approaching the window and then they look in, right? Lard Tom, let me know if there's anything else. As soon as I run out of rec you know, requests, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna start doing the execution. Um, okay, but let's do that German soldier thing. No, phone call. Okay. And I'm going to do it this way. Actually, sorry. I'm going to do that again. Hold on. And the best way to do mocap is always with props. I don't have a M1 Garand prop, but we're going to make it work. kind of thing, and I'll clean that up, of course. Uh-oh. Let's watch that. It looks like some funky foot contact stuff. Uh, Air Parent, you can order a textile separately, so you can um, you can bring the uh, the all the sensors out. Yeah, so we're gonna need a fix. Do a little cleanup. I don't know if that was the orientation that you wanted. Origin. Yeah, so just doing little fixes like this, even right here. See, that's where my, my foot is leaving the ground here. It should be, but look, oh no. Studio thinks that my foot's still on the ground. So if I just make a brief change, see, massive difference. A little bit of cleaning. Um. Yes, you order the textile from the site. I believe um, you might need to go on and like say you want to purchase a suit. And then there's like go to the S Smart Suit Pro 2. And then on that page, I believe there's an add on. You can add on a textile to your cart. So just add on the textile. Don't get the suit, right? Um, yeah, and I believe that's how you do it. Cool. Do a spin. for a turntable, yeah. So go into a T-pose, look forwards, rotate 90 degrees three times. The sensors are not uh, that fragile. They, they, you know, you, they are not invincible. With the V2 suit, um, you, we made the sensors a lot more durable, so we get a lot more, uh, so they, there shouldn't be really faulty sensors. If you ever do run into a problem with sensors or wires gets connected, disconnected, we send you a replacement. And they actually come with replacements. The suit comes with replacements now. Um, so, but no, we have people who, uh, like Locher Films is a good person to check out. He does like rolls and stuff. We've had acrobats. I've had people do backflips and stuff. Yes, magnetic interference can be a thing. Um, it absolutely can. Generally, I don't find it's a huge deal. It's also generally not something you can fix. It's not usually, I'm surrounded by metal. This is metal right here. I have a metal desk extender thing. My chair is metal. Those are not the things that cause magnetic interference. If you have pipes running through your floor, specifically iron metal tends to mess with it. You just kind of have to move rooms. 
that's just the limitation of the system, right? And there's always limitations um, between the price and uh, you know what you get out of it. It's just, are you willing to live with those limitations? Uh, Mostly though, magnetic interference, a lot of what I see people thinking is magnetic interference is actually poor Wi-Fi signal. So that's why it's really important to have a dedicated router. I have a router right there. This all works off of Wi-Fi. So if you have poor Wi-Fi signal, it's gonna get stuttery and look bad. Um, so that's the number one thing that the, that the problem is. Do a jump and a hop? Sure, let's do some hops, let's do some jumps. So with jumping and hopping, I'll show you. It's very usual, typical, that we get weird data. This doesn't look that bad, but cleaning up your data is like a massive part of our, it, the suit is designed explicitly with this cleanup process in mind. So you're not getting the best results unless you just go through, quickly clean up. Look at this hop. This hop's no good right here. I don't land until right here, right? So I gotta clean this up. But it's a it's a very simple, you know, process. Delete, delete, drag back. Now look at this hop. Boop, normal. Boop, yep, same thing. I don't land till here. Just gotta clean this really quick. Boop. Boop. Helps if you make those booping sounds. See, I don't land till here. A little funky legness, which I might be able to continue cleaning, but I might fix that in post. I might just do another recording. Um, okay. Curtis, I like to see how it handles the feet being on the ground, then the roll, then the feet back on the ground. I'm not sure I quite understand um, what you mean by that, Curtis, if you could elaborate. You mean the, the ball of my foot or on the roll? I don't know what you mean. Man, good chat. Okay, what do we got here? Air apparent, we say the gauze number you should be under is point, I think it's point 0.4. I have never found those gauze measurement apps to be accurate to the point where they help. The only way to test the suit in an environment, to see if the suit's gonna work in an environment, is to test it there. Those gauze things are, I don't, I are hit and miss, I don't know. Uh, I don't, they don't work for me. So you need to test it in the environment if it doesn't work, you need to you need to move, and that's just that's just the way it is. Um, you know that's why we offer the 30 day uh, return policy um, because if it's not going to work for you in your specific environment and you don't have anywhere else you can use, then it's not it's just not going to work. And that's it's we it's good to be very clear about that that there's kind of a action forward roll. Curtis, I'm not going to do an action forward roll, but. Um, God, I did a, um, so there's, let me, let me go find, let's go, let's go look it up. Let's go look it up. Here, I'll show you the limits. I hurt myself doing this last time. So I did like a stunt, uh, let's go to my channel. I did like a stunt, uh, live stream a little while back. And then someone was asking how it handles elevation and stairs. It, it handles ele elevation and stairs. Um, in Rococo Studio Beta, in our beta program, we added an elevation tracking mode so you can do elevation tracking. We have tutorials on that on the channel if you're curious about it. Um, here it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the process of hurting my back as we speak. Where is it? Yeah, so this is my... <laughs> I 
this actually came out so well. I thought this was great. Pew, pew, pew. And I was doing somersaults and stuff. So you can check this one out if you, if you want to know more about that sort of thing. And I think I, do I have like a final result that I made? Hold on. Elevation tracking, elevation tracking, perfect loop, perfect loop, smear balls. Where was my, oh golly. Office hours explosions. Yes. And I mean, I could have cleaned this up like a lot more, right? But yeah, it gets the job done. So I think it, I think it's, it totally works for stunts and stuff like that. Um, nice, Air. Happy that this is helping. Um, who was asking about Curtis? Oh, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, Mock, I'm not sure. I thought it should be working with beta, but I, I don't know. I, I know that elevation tracking doesn't work with the first suit, um, at least not yet. We're going to see if we can fix that at some point, I think. Okay. Um, so and I'm just going to do a spooky, scary scare. That's Halloween-y. You know, there we go. Halloweeny. <laughs> Clean that up a little bit. Um, okay, now I'm going to do the execution again. Uh, people, if anybody has any more requests, put them in. But otherwise, I'm going to do an execution scene. I'm wondering about the best way to do that. Uh, no, air parent, it shouldn't. Um, and if you have questions about that, you can book a live one-on-one -on -one demo. But no, it, it shouldn't. The, the reason the suits are backed up is because of sensor problems. Although the, the shipping times have come way down for the suits. Okay, sorry. Uh, Ant, oh, I just saw this. Could you record sitting in a chair and painting something in front of me? Yes. Holding a submachine gun. Hell yeah, do you want the door to open inward or outward? I'll do the painting first. Okay, here comes some painting. I mean, just give me the Oscar right now. Um, going into the entrance. Nice, Peter. Well, you know, you should go for it. 
They're great. I love it. I was a customer before I started working for Rococo. I bought a suit on my own. I loved it. Um, yeah, the suits are very stretchy. We Again, we've had uh, acrobats and stuff and <laughs> Neuralite. Hey, good to see you. Okay, let's do, um, we'll do a submachine gun. Okay, let's, let's try it. There's not a lot of room in this office, so that's about as good as it can get. Painting someone who's painting someone holding a, a submachine gun, you know? Oh, Neuralite. I did get it to work again, um, you know, but it was, uh, it was just those scaling issues. Um, so I need to get back and I'm going to do a proper tutorial. I just haven't had time. <laughs> hey, Bad Monk. I don't know. That sounds pretty good. It was a beautiful painting. Um, you know, www.rococo.com. Khaled. That's where you can get it. Okay. Executed. Execution person. Let's do it. Pretty good. So that's the execution person. Um, the glove sizes, um, they should be pretty tight. So we have a uh, sizing chart, I'm pretty sure, on the website. You want to, it's better that they're tighter than looser. I would go down, but you can also, if it doesn't work out, you could send them back. You want them to be tight. You want, they're, they're kind of forgiving. I mean, I wear a medium and I have very, very small hands. So if you have normal, more normal sized hands for like an adult male, probably a large adult, fe adult woman, probably medium. And then if you have particularly, particularly small hands, like a small, small is very small. I, I have very, very, oh no, are these a small? Hold on. Yeah, my whole thing's gonna go wonky as soon as I unplug a glove. Now I'm curious. Where's my tag? Did I take my tag? Am I? Oh no, there it is. No, but these are a medium. So I have very small hands and I wear a medium. So. If you have normal sized male's hands, I would go with a large. Yeah, I would definitely go with a large. No, I mean, you could maybe get away with wearing a small, but if, it, if it's gonna be shared, just get the medium, right? Cause that's gonna be the most versatile, excuse me. Okay, I might have to repower. Um, yes. Neuralite, creative director. I don't do a lot of creative directing, to be honest. Um, I don't really like creative directing. I am, uh, it's a, but it is a, it's the most, 
accurate title in regards to my position at the company and it makes it easier for me to have conversations with people um so i yeah I'm, i mean i do tutorials and i represent the customer essentially that's my job at the, at the company and i oversee all the video content so i creative direct that way but most creative directors are more like art directors and i don't do that i mean i was a creative director at gopro for many years and I was just basically a senior editor. Um, so creative director, I think is kind of a catch all phrase. Um, okay, now I wanna do the executioner. Okay, so this is, there's gonna be a person who's pushing them to be executed and then standing and then, then the executioner. Executioner assistant. Now we'll do the executioner. And I do have a prop for this, which is good. Always good to use props. Kind of an executioner, it's pretty brutal. Uh, and then we'll just do someone in the crowd who's so excited. We'll just do a bunch of excited crowd stuff. Do a calibration pose. Origin, I see you. I'll do that in a second. Turn and point at another set. Frantically pulling open kitchen cupboards and searching in drawers and looking for something, but I can't see anything. So then I point, what do I point at? I point at something behind me. Ooh, bad monk. That's a good, that sounds like a good tutorial. Okay. So a bunch of crowd spectator idols. Okay, we'll do origin. Oh, nice. Nice bad monk. James, well, we just gave away a suit at our webinar. So paid, you know, uh, check out our Instagram and you know, we'll, we'll be doing more of those giveaways and stuff. And there's there was a 10% discount as well for everyone who attended the webinar, so that helps. Maya IK second animation channel makes all the anime. Yeah, I mean, um, Maya is, is my, you know, we'll be doing a lot more of those. I think we'll, we'll have, and we whenever we run competitions, 
you can always use, <laughs> I don't know about spares, um, but you can always use um, motion library assets to enter our competitions. You don't need to have a suit to enter competitions. You can find the Rococo Studio, which is what this program is, is free. You can download it for free, rococo.com. If you click this motion library button, ML, if you use any of these assets, you can join our competitions and usually we give out suits, we give out gloves. I think we're gonna have one, we're gonna have one coming up that, we have a very fun uh, announcement actually coming up soon, which I'm itching to talk about, but I, sh I shouldn't. Um, that will, is a, a new free mocap tool. So that will also, you can always enter a competition using those. I'm not sure, hair apparent. I think we, uh, I think we send out the email um, when the YouTube video is done, and I, I, I believe the discount should, should be in there. Okay, um, yeah, kitchen cabinets, and then I think we're gonna call it. We're gonna move over to Unreal. So I'm gonna try and. You should always use props and real things when you're doing mocap. I don't have drawers, but I kind of have drawers over here. So I'll, I'll pretend these are drawers that I'm pulling out. I'll just do it. I'll just fake it. Okay, here we go. Kind of thing. <laughs> oh no, James. Well, you can use it. Ask him to take it home over the weekend. I mean, that's the great thing about it. No, I can't, Bad Monk. I asked specifically, and I'm not supposed to be, uh, I can't give away any deets, but coming in the next few weeks. Stay tuned, we'll make a big splash about it. It's super exciting. <laughs> nice, Origin. Sweet. Uh, the housing for the gloves is not interchangeable uh, at all. It's It comes in the glove size that you have. So you can't wash the gloves beyond cosmetically brushing it with a, like a damp towel. No, chat 69, always showing up. How do I remove this user? Remove, report? Yeah, pornography, report. Oh, yeah, it doesn't remove it though. Cool. Put user in timeout. Hide user on this channel. So annoying. Things you never thought that you'd deal with. Okay. That's it. Last call for mocap requests. Otherwise, we're going to jump into Unreal and we're going to get some Damon Targaryen going. It's all my hip swinging, I know. And actually, oh God, I guess, okay. I guess I'm gonna keep the suit on because we wanna drive Damon live. So we'll drive Damon live. Okay, I'm just gonna unplug though for now. If people have more mocap, we can do it later. So suit unplugged, but we will drive Damon Targaryen live too. Um, okay, so let's do it. So this was a, again, this is a bust. I'm gonna open up Unreal. I've actually got it open already bridge I got my Damon Targaryen right here boom so you know I have tutorials on mesh to metahuman and how that whole process works if you don't know about metahumans they're unreal's free um, character creation software they're really amazing they're super high fidelity and now they've added a, a thing where you can you can add in a photogrammetry of someone's head, like you could do a photogrammetry of your own head and then you could send it up and make a metahuman out of yourself. Or you can use like busts and things built in ZBrush that you find online, of which there are many. So I found one of Damon Targaryen, Alex Smith, I think is the actor's name. Um, and so I did the mesh metahuman process. Again, we have a tutorial on the channel about how to do that and downloaded it Oh, Matt, Matt Smith, that's right. Um, downloaded it into 
bridge and now I'm sending it over into um, Unreal. And so this is a whole process in and of itself. Boom, boom, boom. Usually this requires a restart. I'm not going to restart because I also need to enable the Rococo plugin. So we have live streaming plugins that work into Unreal and uh, all the different major softwares. Enabling it just requires a uh, restart. Um, there isn't a character creator preset, but I did a whole VTubing series on our YouTube channel that went over how to get character creator characters into Unreal. There's lots of information on it. Um, online, but you can definitely get it working. Now in Unreal, in Character Creator 3, they added a CC3 Plus, those new characters, they come with 52 blend shapes, so you can get them working in Unreal. Oh my gosh, Origin, it's amazing. I mean, because these me these metahumans are just the most, they have such crazy fidelity. Um, and you have to do, I would watch some tutorials about it, but um, you know, it's really incredible. Okay, preparing shaders. We're gonna have to wait for these shaders to, to go. And of course, I'm gonna try and break my computer in the meantime. Yeah, Unity, uh, you can do a lot of interesting things in Unity too. You know, Daz characters, I can, you can get working in Unity really well. So character creator characters, Vroid characters. Again, I have a whole um, Vroid characters are really cool. VTuber, Coco, VTuber. But this VTubing series that I did, um, So you can get, oh no, yeah. Hey, look at me. So this is a Vroid character and they come, you can get all the physics working like automatically. So it's like a very particular look, um, but it's really cool because the physics and stuff look really good. There's a Hirokazu on Instagram. He uh, uses Vroid characters sometimes for stuff and his stuff just looks so freaking cool. Um, okay, yeah, we are loading these shaders, slowly coming in, a lot more left, but man, like there's little hairs. Um, the skin just looks so good. The eyes look really good. Um, this looks exactly like Matt Smith in my opinion. So this one came out really well. Um, so this will be fun. So really what we should do is kind of wait for the shaders to load, but they're going to take a long time. Hmm. Oh, you know what we can do in the meantime? Let's wait for these shaders to load. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna clean up some of this mocap that we've been doing just to show you that process. It's Morbin Matt. Ma Ma oh, I should have done that dance. Maybe we'll do some of that dance. Uh, we are not selling the older version of the suit anymore, but you can find it on Reddit or uh, I think there's a channel on our Discord for people looking to uh, exchange their suit. Okay, so this is a stomp. So let's clean it up. Turn on my little filter, uh, my little gizmo here to visualize my foot contact with the ground. So I, my feet are not losing. My left foot is not lifting off, so don't need that. There's no little gap here. My foot should just come down. It looks like my foot comes off the ground right here. The rest of it looks good, process changes. Um, the other thing that I normally do is, uh, let's see if we can see it. So right here, you can see these feet are moving, they're drifting slightly. 
if we use the foot IK filter, uh, it guarantees that the feet... Oh God, Siri is always trying to do things. Don't listen to me, Siri. Um, the foot IK filter will guarantee that anytime the software knows that your foot is on the ground, it will stay in place. So no more sliding on the feet like this. This clip's done. Boom. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole our whole bag was trying to make this part of cleanup like as quick and easy as possible. This isn't really even cleanup. This is more like just making sure that our system is understanding what's happening. Um, there is always cleanup. Like cleanup is a part of mocap. It just always is. So that's always gonna be a thing because you inevitably have characters that are different proportions than you. And so you're, you get clipping and you get lots of, lots of problems. You, I've tried to clap and it won't be clapping. My hands will be intersecting, things like that. So there will always be cleanup. These are just really easy ways to kind of make sure that the mocap that you're getting from your Rococo system is, is looking really good. So let's, uh, let's rename some of these actually. Rename this Hollow. Hello. Oh no, Halloween Mummy Walk Cycle. Uh, this one is Big Angry, uh, what is it called? Stomp. Big Stomp. Big Stomp. What was number four? Checking on Unreal, still compiling. <clears throat> which is why this looks a little bit oh right the flashlight thing okay let's do it go and check see as soon as i put on foot ik it's going to fix this foot sliding thing but the first thing i always do is check my foot keyframes This looks like it's There's a little gap there. Don't need these. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Process changes. Foot IK and drift fix. I'll probably add on this one as well. This is foot IK, then drift fix. Check my drift fix again. Well, yeah, it looks pretty good, but you always know that you're, you know, I'm starting and stopping my animations um, at my computer. So I know that my starting and ending positions should really be the same every time. So if I just align my start and end position, it just fixes some micro drift. You'll get more drift the more, the longer your take is. And then also like, depending on kind of what you're, what you're doing. Looks much better. If I'm getting weird knee popping stuff, I can adjust the foot IK uh, settings a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> James. I don't know, Axon. Um, we have a new calibration pose for beta, so that helped it yes i mean the whole idea is that you can iterate quickly and um you know you can create a lot so the, it, like it's not rococo is not the most accurate mocap system but is it super accurate and is it good enough that if you spend 20 minutes doing cleanup you'll get a triple a product you, yeah and the price is such that it's affordable for more people. So, you know, again, like for live, if, you know, all this, these, these cleanup filters are only available on recorded clips. I've had people come and they're like, we, you know, we're so excited to like use your suit on a live ballerina for a 45 minute performance and like have it be on screen. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It won't be good at that. It's just not good at that. 
So you need to play within the sandbox of what the suit is good at, like all tools. That's why you use Houdini for dynamic simulations. I don't use, you know, you can use a lot of things now, but you know, they're, they're good at different things. Oh, Ryla TV, that's nice. Um, but I do think that you can get fantastic results from Rococo. And again, I was a customer, I, I'm a believer. So I drank the Kool-Aid. Are there more, like, would I use an XNs for certain things? For sure, if you have the money, Spend that 12K, baby. Get that X sense. Like, that's a good suit. It's just, it's just, you know, different things. Yeah, Embergen. Right. Use Embergen for your for your fluid sims. Okay, what was this like uh, uh, soldier checking window? Kind of thing. Okay, these shaders are almost done. Oh, Let's do one more. Let's do an easy one. Oh no, not take one. Take one's our Damon test. Nice air. Happy that it's tasting good. Oh, this is the jumping test. I am gonna actually kill this because it looked a little bit weird and I would have just recorded it if I re-recorded it. Oh, spooky. Yep, this looks good. You know, and it's just amazing what just 20 seconds of cleanup, completely different clip, looks far better, but okay, done. The 1200, <laughs> nice Ryla, that's great. XNs, yes, awesome suit, just more expensive and longer calibration just good at different things but man good data you know i think it's always nice when the companies that i like can acknowledge that their product is not oh god i left his shoes on that's awkward uh 100 perfect because no product is 100 perfect and if you work in cg you know that that's just not the way that cg works so this is our beautiful Matt Smith. Look at this guy, looking good. Okay, so again, I have so many tutorials for how to get this set up to receive Rococo mocap. I've already enabled my Rococo plugin. I'm gonna kind of go through this relatively quickly. If you want to know more about this process, go to our site and, um, and yeah, and master visual. Uh, the difference is a kind of better build quality in general. Uh, well, I want to go to my circle. Um, there's a bunch of things that the second suit can do. Uh, why am I so laggy? Am I laggy on screen? I'm going to turn off my blur. Uh, there's a bunch of things that the V2 suit can do that the V1 suit can't. You can It goes up to 200 frames a second as opposed to 100 frames a second. Uh, the sensors are better uh, build quality. Um, yeah, so the, we, when we launched the product, we had a bunch of, um, we, we went through all the differences, so you can go and find our launch videos and they kind of walk through it. Um, Air apparent, you can record longer takes. Um, I wouldn't generally. I try to keep my takes under two minutes, but you can absolutely, I've seen 20 minute takes. And it's fine, it's just harder to clean up. Um, oh God, chat 69, you're killing me. Killing me. The benefits of uh, Curtis, the benefits of Rococo Studio Plus uh, subscription are very concrete. You don't need it unless you are going to be using the live streaming plugins. That's really the only reason to use it. It also unlocks the ability to export uh, at different frame rates but I honestly export everything at 100 FPS anyway, so that's not really it. It's really for live streaming um, and I can't remember if you need it for face capture as well. You might not, but you might. I can't remember right now. Um, but yeah, there's no improvement on the data. It's just uh, live streaming. 
Uh, and yeah, it, it, the suit records in 100 frames a second on Rococo Studio Legacy and Rococo Studio Beta records at 200 frames a second. But as I say often, we are not, don't use Rococo Studio Beta yet. It's in beta for a reason. It's still buggy. When it exits beta, it will be ready for production use. It's not yet, but you can check out some things that Rococo Studio Beta has. It's just don't use it for your day-to-day -day recording. Um, the vibe tracker on the suit, some people love it. I, I've never used it, so I can't really speak to it. I think that you should kind of, it's better just to work within the limits of what the suit can do. The vibe tracker is gonna add a whole other element of complexity to your workflow. So I generally would say, try not to do that, but it, we do have a workflow that works with the vibe tracker and it can give you absolute position of the suit. If you're looking for climbing stairs and stuff, that's enabled in Rococo Studio Beta. And we have tutorials on the channel on, on how to go through that. Okay, let's do it. Let's get this MetaHuman Daemon Targaryen going. So I've imported my MetaHuman, I've turned on my Rococo plugin. And again, we have tutorials if you wanna know what I'm doing uh, more. So I'm going to MetaHuman folder, going to my, my MetaHuman's named new MetaHuman identity, which is not good, but whatever. I'm gonna open up the main blueprint for him. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the LOD, go to click on LOD sync. That's going to be the level of detail. I just wanna lock that at the highest level of detail. By default, it's a negative one, which um, changes depending on the camera's distance from the character. I don't want it to be changing into different levels of detail. Um, okay, so now I wanna go into the body blueprint. And there was a bug in Mesh to MetaHuman where it was taking to the wrong place. I think now this is the right place. This is Unreal Engine 5. So again, I just found, I clicked on body, you know, went to the body blueprint, double clicked it, it opened up uh, in the skeleton, skeletal mesh view. I wanna go to the animation blueprint. Once we're in the animation blueprint, yep, this is a bug that they still have. I don't know why that's still there. It'll open up in the event graph. I'm gonna move my guy down here. It'll open up in the event graph. I wanna to go to the anim graph, animation graph. And then we are going to make a little room here at the beginning. Oh, and then the last, the other thing I need to do before we get started is I need to add these bone maps, which I, uh, I have in, uh, you know, if you go look up any of our tutorials, you'll find links to download these bone maps. Uh, especially the met if you go to the mesh to metahuman tutorial these bone maps are there i need to add these bone maps into my metahuman project file so i don't need to recreate them every time so i'm just going to open up the project file add a copy of them into the content folder and that'll just be helpful for us uh okay where is my okay here we go so now we need to make the blueprint for a metahuman so i'm going to search for coco Find a Rococo body pose node, link it up, boom, boom. Then, and I know I'm, I'm going pretty fast because I just want to get to using this cool metahuman, but we have tutorials that go through all this. I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to move my, oh no, come on. I'm going to create a new variable here. Uh, I'm just going to create two. The first one I'm going to call Rococo oh, actor name. I think you can call it anything, but I always call it that. I want to change the variable type to name. For the second variable, I'm going to call this Rococo bone map. And for this variable type, variable type I'm going to search for Rococo, Rococo body map data, class reference, boom. Then I'm going to drag these variables in. Oops both times hitting get Rococo actor name, link that into the Rococo actor name, then get bone map, link that into the retarget asset, uh, compile and save. We're gonna get a bunch of errors, but that's okay. Once we've compiled though, we have the option to add in our bone map. So again, I already have bone maps that I've added into these free downloadable project files. In fact, in that tutorial for Mesh to MetaHuman, we have a free project file where this is all already done. I think I used a Nikola Tesla model for that. 
so it's already done if you want to just play around with it and you have Rococo. But I'm going to select the MetaHuman Bone Map, make sure I hit Apply. I'm not going to add in the name. And then the last thing I'm going to do is under Control Rig, and now I'm going to move my thing back down. Under Control Rig, you can see that we're in an A pose. For Rococo mocap, you need the character to be in a T pose. So, but we have a T pose asset. If you uh, highlight the control rig and you go to control rig class, metahuman T pose, compile, save. Ooh, look at that. We got a T pose. So nice. Boom, body, body blueprint should be done. Um, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the face blueprint. This is a bug with all metahumans still. For the Apple AR kit, their face lips tend to always hang, the bottom lip tends to, ha tends to hang open. So this is actually not a Rococo thing, this is just a metahuman thing. So if we open up the face blueprint, go to anim graph, uh, right here between live link pose and AR kit mapping pose, we want to add a modify curve node. Um, we're going to right click on this animation pose, add curve pin. We're going to search for mouth shrug lower. So here we're basically adding a, a default onto the mouth shrug. And here I'm going to, I'm going to show you the face, show you what this does. When I make this 0.5, look at this bottom lip, compile, save. See, it just pushes the lip up. So the default is the lip is a little bit higher. It just makes your, your AR kit facial mocap look better. It's a thing with all metahumans and it has been since they were released. Metahumans are still technically in a beta, I think. <laughs> um, I think that's almost it. We're pretty much it. We're pretty much done. No, we're not done yet. Okay, right. So the last thing that we need to do is go to the root and Oh, did they change this a little bit? Interesting. Hair LOD setup. They might have changed this recently. I don't know if, I wonder if this workflow will still work. It should. Okay, we're gonna grab the body, bring it out. We're gonna go cast to, oh no, what is it? Get anim instance, then we're going to cast to male. So cast to the body blueprint. Again, this is confusing. Yeah. Um, that's why we have tutorials that go through it step by step. Um, Kurzbo, we were recording free mocap and taking requests in the first part of this uh, live stream. So usually we, um, we, we do that in the beginning, so I think you might have missed your opportunity. But I will give out all the free, all this mocap that we made. Uh, I'll, I'm going to edit it up and, and put it. And if you look in the description of this video, there is a little find our free mocap. All the free mocap we've made on these live streams so far can be found uh, at that Google Drive link. Okay, we're going to do that. Then we are going to set for Coco. No, we go from the top. Set for Coco. Oh. oh, so this. Okay, so it might still have this bug. Okay, I'm going to compile and save this for now. We need to go back to metahumans, common, male, tall, normal weight, body, check the anim BP. Nope, this should be right. Nope, see, look at this. Master metahuman, you're killing me here. Ugh. So, yeah, this is in the tutorial, but I gotta redo this right now. Okay, so because it, it, it sends you to the wrong body blueprint still. Unreal. It's unreal. Come on, unreal. Um, so that's our Rococo body pose node. We're going to have to remake those two variables we just made. Rococo action. 
after name. And I know that my little thing is hiding what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing the exact same thing that I did a second ago. Rococo body map, make it a Rococo body map data class reference. I knew this was gonna happen. Link them in, retarget asset, actor name, compile, save. Then on the control rig, go and add in the metahuman T pose, compile, save, yep. And then on the Rococo body pose, make sure the bone map is set to the metahuman bone map. Apply, compile, save. And now, guess what? As soon as we go back to our main blueprint, I mean, I say, guess what, but we'll see. I should be able to set Rococo actor name. Bada boom, bada bing. Here is where I set the actor name that's in Rococo Studio. Compile, save. Now we're gonna drag in our boy, kill the player start, which I hate. Ooh, the sun is bright. An old Matt Smith. Um, and the last thing we need to do is we need to select the body, torso, legs, and feet, and just make sure that they're using animation blueprint and that they're using the MetaHuman tall animation blueprint. Uh, and at this point, guess what? It should work. So let's open up. So you can stream over pre-recorded um, mocap or live mocap. Let's let's do the pre-recorded first, and I'll set up the live. So we have our Unreal Engine uh, streaming on. This will just loop. We need to open up a virtual production live link. Connect to Rococo Studio. Oh, we need to add a Rococo receiver to the scene, of course. Then, yep, there we go. Look at what we got here. It's not, is it not getting the facial data? Oh no. No, it should be, hold on. Window, virtual production, live link. Oh, right, because on your MetaHuman, you need to select under live link face subject, the face. Nope, that's not it, is it? Use ARKit face. <laughs> they, so they are changing things, so this is a new, okay. Okay, and we got some real texture problems. Holy shit, that's terrifying. Uh, so this, in theory, we should be able to fix by changing the texture streaming pool. We type into the console r.streaming.pool size. We make this like 4096. Maybe that'll fix it. There we go. Matt Smith in the house. I am Damon Targaryen. Looking good. Any ideas for a man without a motion capture suit to make an animation of someone picking up headphones and then dancing? Uh, well, come to our Thursday live streams and you know what? Hey, wait, is this chat 69? Did you make it back? God damn it. Remove. So frustrating. Um, well, it wasn't easy to learn. It's difficult to learn. and uh, But we do, again, we have so many tutorials on our channel about how to get it all up and running um, that go really step by step. And that's how I, you know, that's how you learn things. You just learn by tutorials slowly and surely. Um, so you know what, Jamie, how about, I'm gonna stop this. Picking up headphones, James, 
Jamie K, this is your time to tell me what exactly what you want because I'll record this mocap for you right now. And then we will be giving this up out for free tomorrow. We'll load this up. So you want them to pick up, pick up, are the, are the headphones like AirPods in their pocket? Are they on a table in front of them? Of course, this is, this is what we do every Thursday. So if, you know, if you ever want free mocap, come on Thursdays at 11 a.m. PST. We take free, you know, mocap requests and we make it and then we, then we give it out. We're gonna give it out to everyone. We're not just gonna give it out to you. So you gotta be cool with that. But yeah, let me know what you want. And then uh, if you look under the description, yeah, um, you can find where we, you know, the location of where we give out the mocap. See ya, Origin, very nice. I hope, uh, you know, the mocap will be up tomorrow. <laughs> Submachine gun, doors. <laughs> okay. Okay, so can you hold out the AirPod? Let me read this, hold on. Gotta do my calibration pose. Okay. Hold out the AirPod like headphones. So I, I grab them from my pocket or? So like what I'm thinking is like, you know, this kind of like, uh, I, I think it's, oh, in front of you, but they're, but they're out of their case. And there's going to be, you always need to do a little cleanup because you can see my hands are in front of my face. So that's just a part of mocap. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Hopefully that works. <laughs> nice. I'll clean it up a little bit too. Okay, but really what I wanted to do, is that good? I was trying to channel my apple. Oh, hell yeah, you know it. What do you think I learned how to dance? So I'm gonna connect my face capture because I wanna drive Damon live here. Put this on the old desk. So yeah, again, I'll <laughs> I'll clean all this up. You're gonna have to clean up the hands. That's that's just like, and we have lots of tutorials. Chef dance, drunk dancing. Sure, I'll do a drunk dancing. Um, yeah. So drunk dancing, just like. Kind of thing. <laughs> um, drunk dancing, I'm not gonna fall over because I don't want to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do one drunk dancing, then I'm gonna get back to driving our Damon Targaryen. Okay, do some drunk dancing. I need my beer. I got my beer.
Can you tell that I've been doing, that I've done drunk dancing before? <laughs> nice, Alberto. <laughs> oh, my microphone is right here. Choop, 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 choop. Okay, let's drive Damon though. I'm gonna clean that up. Okay, so we got, you know, again, we went over this at the beginning of our of our stream, but if we open up Damon, Hello. Here I am. So I'll do a little straight pose here. You can do a straight pose from the iPhone, which is nice. Um, yeah, and this is like actually looking a little bit laggy. Probably because I have OBS and YouTube and all these other things happening. But usually I can actually get a little bit more responsive. I think it's also just maybe, I don't know. This is a ray trace scene. So I could like turn that off. I could uh, DLSS, I could turn on maybe. Looks pretty freaking good, though. Where's my dragon? You. Damon, he's very pouty, Damon. The hair, there's not much simulation happening on the hair. Um, so, no spoilers, we won't do spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers in the chat. Um, Luke, what's going on? Nice, Luke Crisante, one of our amazing team members, giving, out, giving, free, giving one on one demos to people, holding it down. Um, yes. Generally, I, I recommend actually streaming over pre-recorded takes because you can use our cleanup filters on pre-recorded takes. This has no live filters. So if I start jumping around, I'm probably gonna head all over the place. Um, so there's a lot of different little tricks that you can get uh, to get the best performance out of it. But man, again, I think this is, you can get some really accurate, you know, emotional, stuff out of this system and metahumans are free they're free it's crazy fascinating fascinating hmm fascinating uh oh that's getting into a whole other things Puff up the cheeks. Yeah, I need to do something fun with this because he. This looks. I mean, I mean, this lighting is just terrible. We could just quickly. I mean, again, I am such a freaking noob when it comes to Unreal, but yeah, I'm gonna kill the light source. I'm gonna kill the sky sphere. I might even kill the atmospheric fog. Yes, kill it all. And then add in some lights. See, this is where it starts to get interesting. Turn off the locking.
Add a little fill light. Oof, my computer is starting to not enjoy what is happening. Make this one a lot uh, less intense. Right? Um, then we gotta add a camera. Uh, change these focus settings. Change the focal length to like 80. Kind of thing. So here is where it starts to get a lot more interesting. Ooh, it's really lagging. Doesn't like this. Also, this aperture is crazy. Can I? Yo. Why is it so? Oh, God. Oof, my computer. Let's up the camera speed here. Oof. Yo. Oh, no. Unreal. You are killing me here, buddy. What else do I have open? I probably have like... Do I have After Effects open? No. But anyway, wait, I wanted to move this light. No. Oh my god. Anyway, you can get some really interesting stuff. Peace. Yeah. So there's other ways to optimize this scene, I'm sure, uh, besides what I'm doing. But yeah, there it is all working. And actually, I bet if this is, I wonder how this will, let's play back this. So I don't have to actually move this. I bet it'll be way faster. Also, you know, this light is just too bright, you know? Yeah, looks good. Super fun. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much uh, it. Bow ties are cool. Yeah, I can say bow ties are cool. Hold on. Let me stop my playback here, go back to live, live view. And maybe I'll just add in an 
HDR eye backdrop. Oh. Unreal. You're supposed to be so fast. You're killing me. Oof. I don't know why it's... Oh, I might need to center the HDRI backdrop. Yeah, here we go. So there's this weird thing that happens It's Morbin time. <sighs> Mighty Morbin time. Oh my God, chat 69 killing me. Put user in timeout. How do I ban you? Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. I haven't seen Morbius in a while. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, for everyone who's joining us, looks like we got some more viewers. We could probably do a little bit more custom mocap. If anybody has any mocap that they want made, um, we could make some. Otherwise, I think I'm probably gonna call it pretty soon. We did about two hours, pretty good. Um, yeah, we do these live streams every Thursday at 11 a.m. PST. Kneading the fruits with my feet, like wine kind of thing. Scared people, scared walking cycle. Yeah, we could do both of those. Sure. Hold on. I want to say goodbye. Matt Smith here. Signing off. Nice, James. I'm happy you. Uh, I'm happy you liked it. Okay. Let's uh, let's do that. front. I'm going to kill my face capture because we don't need it for that. And we'll do two more mocaps. We'll do some grape stomping. Here we go. We have to clean that up a little bit, which will be easy to do. I bet we'll see all these sorts of little tiny errors here. It looks okay. But this is also something that Drift Fix can maybe really help with. Let's turn on Drift Fix here. Um, Jamie? The, what you could do is maybe send me, um, send it to me on Discord. Um, that can, that, that could, that could be, that could work. Um, or just join next week and then in the chat, like we'll figure out a way for you to get the file over or put an unlisted link on YouTube and then I can open it up and see the reference. Yes. Alberto, you should join the Rococo Discord. Great community. Alberto is a huge part of it. Um, and yeah, people, sometimes people other than me will help you work out on mocap. And the last thing is, what was it? Oh, scared walk cycle. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Scared person walk cycle.
do my calibration pose. I always like to walk forward. Hopefully scared, timid, hopefully that, that kind of thing works. See you, James. So, and again, if we want to make, oh, so this is definitely gonna need a little editing. So this is left foot. Let's just do this really quick. Boom, left foot goes down. Right, oh. Right foot needs some editing too. Boom. Oh. Left foot. Wait a second. Right foot. Oh, there is the right foot. Okay, sorry. Right foot. Right foot down. Oh, and this left foot is not, oh, I, I was doing on the wrong foot. I gotta turn my gizmos on here. Okay. One, two. Three, four. Okay, process changes. And then we're gonna do the walk cycle will be starting from the right foot um, coming up. Right there, make it loopable. Start from origin, align, motion to access, process changes. And again, there's always weird stuff with the hands that you need to fix with the walk cycles when you're using the gloves as well. Um, This is tough because as a walk cycle, hmm. No, you just you'd still have to just be moving forward at the appropriate speed and the and the feet should stay still. Yeah, of course, loopable. Making walk cycles. We made a mummy walk cycle earlier. Here was the mummy one. This was, I think, a little bit better. Or a zombie one. But you can do this with like dances and stuff too for background characters and you know, there's this little glitch which is just the loop restarting on the t-pose um but yeah super fun to feed this into houdini and stuff and get some crowds going with some custom walk cycles so yeah i think we're gonna call it there today this was great thank you everyone for joining um, again, I'm going to clean the mocap up and I'll get it up online and then you, you can find it, you know, at the same link that is in the uh, description below here. And, um, yeah, this was super fun today. Got to do something with Damon Targaryen and, uh, I'm going to sign off. Everyone have a very good weekend and, um, the game addict. Thanks for coming. We'll see you on the next one next Thursday, 11 AM PST. Super fun. Yeah. Thanks, Mateo. It was fun. It was a fun one. Alberto. See you, man. Okay. See y'all. See you, Farsai. <laughs>